discuss the escapement in more detail. The escapement is the heart of the clock. There are many different types of escapements, but the most common belong to a class of escapements called anchor escapements. They get their name from the fact that their shape somewhat resembles a ship's anchor. The two most common anchor escapements are the recoil escapement and the Graham deadbeat escapement. Most inexpensive mechanical clocks have a recoil escapement. The higher grade clocks more often have a deadbeat escapement. Each has many variations. Here is a recoil anchor and a Graham deadbeat anchor. And here is a strip version. Even though they look very different, the working surfaces or pallets would have the same angles whether in full anchor form or strip form. American kitchen and mantel clocks most commonly have a strip recoil escapement, but many have a strip deadbeat. There are three functions that every mechanical escapement must perform. It must alternately stop, then release the forward rotation of the escape wheel in synchronization with the movement of the pendulum. This stopping function is called the locking phase. It must provide a regular impulse to keep the pendulum swinging. It must have some clearance, called drop, where the pallets interface with the escape wheel so that the teeth of the escape wheel can neither skip by the pallet and run uncontrolled or bind against the pallets and stop the escape wheel from rotating. The anchor recoil escapement has many variations, but they all function the same way. Remember that all escapements must alternately stop then release the forward movement of the escape wheel in time with the pendulum. In a recoil escapement, the locking phase, where the forward movement of the escape wheel is stopped, is replaced by the recoil. The term recoil is used to describe the slight backwards movement of the escape wheel after each forward movement. Recoil occurs because the point on the anchor pallet where the escape wheel tooth touches is a flat surface. The inertia of the pendulum causes the pallet to dip down past the point where the escape wheel tooth initially touched when it first encountered the pallet. It pushes the escape wheel tooth down with it, reversing its motion. Recoil escapements are relatively easy to make and are very forgiving. They tend to work even if they're worn or out of adjustment. Even the simplest strip anchor is still often operating after 100 years or more of continuous service. Given the best of conditions where everything is as perfect as possible, the recoil escapement can expect to keep time to about 5 or 10 seconds per week. Our movements are far from optimal. A minute or two a week is considered good for this type of movement in a home environment. There are three distinguishing features that help identify a recoil escapement. First, the anchor is asymmetrical, which means the entry and exit pallets have distinctly different shapes. The strip version of the recoil anchor looks much like an unfolded paper clip. The entry pallet is shaped like a hook. The exit pallet is a simple angle, somewhere around 90 degrees. Next, there are only two working surfaces or pallets that contact the escape wheel teeth, one on the entry side and one on the exit side of the anchor. Notice that the pallet surfaces are flat. Finally, the escape wheel teeth point away from the direction of rotation. If the escape wheel turns clockwise or towards the right, the angle of the escape wheel teeth will point in the counterclockwise direction or to the left. Notice how the escape wheel moves forward and then momentarily reverses direction before moving forward again. This momentary reversal is the recoil. Now let's slow things down so we can see exactly what's happening. Directly after the recoil, we see the escape wheel move smoothly forward as the escape wheel tooth slides along the pallet. This is when the escape wheel is giving impulse or energy to the pendulum. When the impulse phase is complete and the escape wheel tooth reaches the end of the pallet, there's a small gap between the pallet on the opposite side of the anchor and the new tooth that is ready to strike it. This gap is called the drop. The tooth giving impulse slides off its pallet and the escape wheel moves rapidly to jump the gap and the new tooth drops onto the opposite pallet. The overswing of the pendulum momentarily pushes the escape wheel tooth that just landed on the pallet in the reverse direction, creating the recoil and the cycle starts over again. Drop, recoil, impulse. Drop, recoil, impulse. Now back to normal speed.